So the tune I'm going to play for you today is called Jenny Dang the Weaver. Um, I believe it is primarily a Scottish tune. Um, I'm also going to play you the Irish variant of that tune uh, that you'll hear occasionally at uh, Irish sessions. Um, and it's important to note that a lot of times there isn't just a transatlantic influence uh, like between Scotland and the US, but uh, Scotland and Ireland are actually very close to each other. They share a lot of common tunes, um, but they each play them in their own way. So I'll play you the Scottish version first. It's a two-part reel. It's in D major. And it may have been a piping tune. You, you will hear this on pipes, but you'll hear it on fiddle quite a bit. And a lot of the fiddle players in Cape Breton will play this tune um, as well. But it's a, considered a pretty solid traditional Scottish uh, tune. Pretty common. Pretty much everyone knows this tune if you play traditional Scottish music. So the Irish version of this tune is a three-part tune, um, and I will just play it for you, and then I'll talk about some of those differences. So the first thing you might notice right away is that one of the first notes is very different, but it also sets a, a different kind of scene. So in the Scottish version, it's very clearly in D major. The Irish version changes one note. It changes to... Which then implies uh, that this chord that you would play if you were... Uh, accompanying this tune would be in B minor. So it has a very different sound. Uh, I don't have an accompanist with me at the moment, but you can try to play along, and if you have a piano in front of you, you can actually play the B minor chord and hear how different the tune sounds. Um, so that's the first thing you'll notice. Instead of... That's really the only difference in the first part. There's a couple of little differences. The second part is probably as close to the second part of the uh, Scottish tune as you can get in this tune, although there's a little bit of a different tail in the Irish tune. The tail is kind of the, the last maybe eight or so notes before it goes into the next part. So if you recall, the Scottish tune goes like this. And it repeats that, so it doesn't do anything different. The Irish tune goes like this. Which is a little different. Um, and then it goes. And then it has this funny little tail. Which, I don't know, to me sounds like maybe the, the, the fiddle player got a little bit bored or something and wanted to add a little variation. And then you have this really wacky third part, um, which... Which sort of sounds like, you know, a fiddling variation that was kind of just tacked on. Um, someone wanted to make it a little bit of a longer tune, or they thought, oh, we'll just elaborate that a little bit. 
Um, it's not uncommon in Irish music to have three part tunes like that, where the third part is really just kind of an elaboration of the other two parts, particularly the first part. Um, you hear that in Scottish music a little bit. They do it a little bit differently. They're more likely to do it um, in four parts instead of three parts. Um, but anyways, all of these little things contribute to a very different kind of tune. So I have a very difficult time when I play the Irish tune now to not think about the Scottish tune and how different it is. Um, the, uh, let me see what else I can say. Um, the, I generally, personally, prefer the Scottish tune. It's a very driving tune and it's a very even tune. It really has. Uh, it's a very firm, kind of uh, cheerful sort of, sort of tune, very straightforward. Um, the Irish one's a little bit gentler, a little bit um, swingier, maybe. Um, but um, yeah, you can pick your own favorite. Um, and there's nothing, <laughs> nothing better about one of the tunes versus the other. Um, and um, I guess let me know. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you have tunes in your head that you think might be similar, let me know. Um, I will put them on my list and try to record them for next time. Take care.